Hi, welcome to another episode of Innovation Through Autodesk Simulation. I'm Dave May. And I'm Brian Zayas. And today, Dave, we're going to tong it up. That's right. So what we're going to talk about today is the design challenge of designing some tongs for, you know, backyard barbecuing. The goal, first of all, is to make our design safe. And our criteria is kind of arbitrary, but, you know, we don't want someone to pick up the tongs. Maybe they've been sitting in the fire or sitting on the grill. We don't want them to pick up the, the tongs and get burned. Right. That'll ruin a barbecue. Oh, it sure will. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want you to be able to leave these sitting on the grill, not the whole tongs, but, you know, the end of the tongs, right. for 10 minutes okay. and have the handle temperature still be less than 110 degrees Okay, Fahrenheit. So really using simulation is a very low cost, fast way of getting quick thermal data on your designs. Sure, without of course having to produce a physical prototype first. Absolutely. So in this design we want to explore several different materials. You can see the geometry uh, is pretty well set up, but what about if we use different handle uh, materials? What if we use different metals for the tongs themselves? So being able to quickly explore what if scenarios with these materials is pretty fun. Here we are in Inventor and we're actually going to create a new level of detail for this analysis. Right? So we can use a level of detail, we'll, we'll call it the simulation level of detail, right. and in that we can do things like take out the spring, take out the rivets, you know, get rid of some of those features that aren't really going to be that important and we're not going to want to deal with meshing them. That's right. I mean, is the spring really going to contribute to the overall temperature state? Probably not. Now that we've set up our level of detail, hit up the add-ins menu and hit the mesh button. Brings us over to simulation and we have to choose our analysis type. And it looks like I have, I have two types of thermal analysis, uh, steady state and transient. So obviously transient is going to be time dependent. What, what kind of situations would I, would I use each of those in? Well, it, a transient analysis could be something where we just want to turn loads on and off with time, right? We want to have this load applied for a certain amount of time and then mm -hmm. maybe cycled off. or in this case, our loads are going to be constant, but we just want to see what happens to these tongs after a certain period of time, right? We know if we leave them in the fire forever, they're all going to heat up to around that temperature. Right. But, you know, in this case, we're not doing that. We, we just want to say, hey, that's not practical, but if we leave them on the grill for 10 minutes, how hot are they going to get? Right. So, in this case, time's very important to us because that's what we're really analyzing against. That's a great point. So to me, steady state is basically you get one answer at the end of your analysis, which is basically what happens after an infinite amount of time. So since right. you want to see exactly what happens from zero to ten minutes, we're going to do a transient analysis, which basically means we're going to split it up into time steps and get a uh, solution at every one of those steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going into the system, we can apply things like heat, temperature, and then out of the system, we have convection or heat sinks. We can do whatever we need sure. to do. Th those could be into the system too, though. Right? They can both be, they could be a convection load heating your system up, or mm. it could be one cooling it down. Now, once we get into the interface, before we even mesh it here, we're going to go ahead and close some of these toolbars. Yeah. So we've been using this interface for a little bit now, but we're going to go ahead and start customizing it just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of these toolbars that maybe we don't really use every day. Yeah, something like the drawing toolbar. So what we want to do to simulate this problem is apply a surface applied temperature. Basically you know that there's going to be a certain temperature that is held on a certain surface. Right. And there's an important distinction here. There's a surface applied temperature and then there's a surface temperature. Now if you choose surface temperature, that's actually an initial temperature. Right. Okay. So that's a starting temperature for right. a transient. A surface applied temperature is a fixed or held temperature throughout the Okay. Good. Length of the analysis. Right. So in a steady state analysis, would that in, matter? In a steady state analysis, a surface temperature yes. is basically nothing. useless. Right. Because right? it just it's dies It's an initial, but you're looking over an infinite period of time, that that's not really going to change anything. Okay. Now, like I said, we want to kind of simulate someone holding these in the grill or in a fire, and we don't want to apply the temperature to, you know, the entire tongs, just basically maybe the tips. So just like we did in episode one, to limit the application area of a force, Inside Inventor, if we use the split command, we can split the tong in half and then be able to apply a uh, temperature to just the front half of the surface. Right. So after we make this quick change in Inventor, we're going to go ahead and re-import the model mm -hmm. and then re-mesh it. Now, could we use a plate element for a thermal problem like this if we wanted to? Since yeah, it is a you, sheet metal you definitely part? can do that. Um, you know, 
in Autodesk Simulation, you have the ability to use any type of elements in any type of analysis. Let's talk about material properties. We have the default materials that came in from Inventor, but we really want to run through some quick what-if scenarios using different materials. For example, the tongs themselves, let's start off by maybe making them out of aluminum. So a 6061 sure. T6 aluminum, we'll apply that right out of the database. Uh, and then maybe the handle, we want to start off by looking at some ABS plastic. And this is really the fun part to me. We can explore our design space just really quickly with these different materials and see what combinations are going to be safe or unsafe from, from a thermal perspective you know, before we start doing any kind of prototyping. So let's talk a little bit about, about material properties with thermal analysis because it's different. Sure. You know, in structural analysis, we talked about Young's modulus being the stiffness. We have the yield strength. We have Poisson's ratio. Thermal, we, we, we don't use any of that. Really, there's two material properties that are, are critical. Mm -hmm. And that's thermal conductivity and specific heat. Um, the actual density is important, too. But really, specific heat and density are only used for transient analyses. And one thing you got to be careful of, you look at thermal conductivities, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of those are published in watts per meter Kelvin. Yeah. Now, that's the same as watts per meter C or joules per second meter Kelvin or C. That's right. So a, a watt, of course, is a joule per second. Right. Right. So using the conventional unit systems that you may see published places and using the unit systems in Autodesk simulation, uh, you know, you'll be able to set it up the same. It's just a matter of making sure you set it to the right unit system to enter your data. Now, so we set up the temperature. Uh, we also need to think about how is the heat going to escape the system. Right. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and set a convection load okay. on these outer surfaces of the tongs. So, so far we're dealing with conduction, right? We're talking about conduction coefficient. Mm -hmm. Basically the tendency of the metal uh, to transmit heat internally, and then convection, right? right? Releasing heat to a fluid, such as the air. So, you know, we're sitting here and we're, we're convecting uh, off into the environment. So, it's actually more complicated than, than it seems. You know, in, in real life, you have the tongs sitting there and you have air surrounding them, which is actually kind of a, a fluid problem. Um, so, the transfer of heat to the fluid or the air is what we call convection, and what governs that is a convection coefficient. So if I select this entire model, uh, right click and add a convective load, right. uh, it needs a coefficient, right? Sure. How, how do I know what that coefficient is? That's one of the trickiest parts of doing a thermal analysis. Right. So for something like this where it's just sitting probably in ambient, you know, fairly room temperature air, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can look convection coefficients up for, you know, a lot of standard type of situations such as this. Now we also have a library of stored convection coefficients. Oh, cool. And the first right. one in the list is actually room temperature air. Okay. Just buoyancy flow, meaning the air is fairly stagnant. So this is probably a pretty good choice for a convection coefficient for this problem. What if, what if you're doing a forced cooling problem? You know, we have a lot of customers out there making electronics enclosures with, with fans blowing over. Can, can we make the same assumptions, just window select everything and, and apply a, a uniform convection coefficient? Yeah, not usually. Once you have situations like that where you're going to have velocities that are really affecting the rate of heat transfer, that's when you really need to start looking at CFD as part of the heat transfer problem. That's right. Well, probably part of the solution, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely, because the convection coefficient underneath is actually proportional to uh, density, the Reynolds number of the fluid, velocity squared, mm -hmm. so a lot of de dependency right there on, on the fluid properties. So let's take a look at the results. So tell me how I can get, let's say, the, the maximum temperature on the top of this handle. What you could do is hide the tongs so that all you're seeing is the handles and actually turn on the max probe. So it's actually going to put a point right there Ooh, for you. I like that idea. That's a pro tip. So we can turn off the, suppress the results on the tongs mm -hmm. and then you can see the range automatically uh, flips and, and corrects itself to show only the handle and the max is now reflecting the maximum on the handle. Right. So now, you know, we could use this to change our gradient for the color scheme or in this case what we really want to do is just get that data out, right? We just want to plot, hey, I'm going to pick this max point and see this over time, see how it changes. That's right. So I really want a time-based graph, temperature, climbing, mm -hmm. does it level off, which what's the behavior of this of this temperature? Exactly. 
So what we've done here is actually uh, taken that, plot this, this data, and then export that mm -hmm. to Excel. Mm -hmm. right? That way in Excel we can take the data from all the different plots and kind of aggregate it onto one. That's um, right. So that's what you see here. You can see here some of the designs based on the material perform better than others. The wood, in fact, is one of the best insulators that we had. Right. And, it, I, you know, personally, when I, we started doing this, I said, oh, I'm sure the plastic's going to be the best. So we can see really quickly, you know, out of these four materials, what works and what doesn't. So, for example, the plastic and the aluminum don't really work, whereas the brass does. Mm -hmm. That's why you see, you know, sometimes you have uh, fireplace pokers, they have brass handles, you yep. know, yeah, that, yeah. That, that works. So, with that, I'm Brian. I'm Dave May. Simulate early, simulate often, we'll see you next time.